Today, we will visit the battlefield of Waterloo and stand in Napoleon's footsteps to look through his eyes. What could he see during the battle? As part of our series of videos on the Waterloo campaign, we will take you on a tour of Napoleon at Waterloo. Come on, let's take a look. The battlefield of Waterloo is relatively small as compared to other Napoleonic battles. From end to end, it's only about three miles. Although that is a compact space to fit 72,000 French and 68,000 Anglo-Dutch troops, it is still a large enough area that one man on a horse can only see so much at one time. The telescopes at the time provided about three times magnification, and that only helped so much. So where did Napoleon place himself to try and control his army? Let's start at his first headquarters. So what can Napoleon see at Waterloo? Well, here we are at La Caillou Farm, which was Napoleon's first headquarters. It's on the main road between Chalois and Waterloo, and it had been raining for days. And so having a farm right on the main road where he could huddle up with his staff was super important. So in the movie, uh, Waterloo, you see him having breakfast with his marshals and he throws a fit. That would have been here at La Caillou. But as you can see in the distance, you cannot see the battlefield of Waterloo at all. It's fairly far away. So this was mainly a headquarters where he would receive messages and send out orders. The farm also had a large orchard and courtyard, which became a campsite for a battalion of the old guard that were assigned to protect Napoleon. Overall, it was a good spot for an army commander. He was accessible by the main road, the farm was easy to find, and it allowed for his personal guard. But it did not have a view of the battlefield. On the morning of the battle, Napoleon moved to the high ground just north of La Caillou, at the height of Rossam. We don't know where this was exactly, but it is possible that it was the heights just north of La Caillou. The film Waterloo depicts Napoleon at one of his forward headquarters, which seems to be reminiscent of how an aide-de-camp described Napoleon at this location. He was sitting on a straw chair in front of a rustic table and holding his map open on it. His famous spyglass was in his hand, and he often pointed it at various parts of the battlefield. To his left stood Marshal Soult, alone, waiting orders, while ten paces behind him all the members of his staff were grouped together on horseback. Sappers from the engineers were leveling the ground around and making ramps so that people could reach the emperor more easily. With his telescope, Napoleon could have seen the battlefield just over a mile and a half to the north. It might have looked something like this. It would undoubtedly have given him a decent view of his own army and not much of the enemy. It was a good place to ensure that the army was arranged as he wanted. Around 1.30 p.m., the attack by the French First Corps to the east of the main road began. The Grand Battery of about 50 cannon were supporting the assault, and the area was undoubtedly covered in smoke, but appeared that the French were pushing the Allies back over the ridge. It was at this time that Napoleon moved to his forward headquarters near the inn of La Belle Alliance, behind the Grand Battery. Here, we see La Belle Alliance, which was to Napoleon's left as he faced the Allied army. It gave him a great view of what he probably thought was the decisive part of the battlefield. If the French broke through here, then he would win the day. Of the three locations of Napoleon's headquarters during the battle, this was the most hazardous. He remarked to his unfortunate local guide, who was flinching from a stray cannonball, Come, my friend, don't lurch around like that. A musket ball can kill you from behind just as easily as from the front, and the wound it makes is much worse. Although this position was close enough to the enemy to be endangered by spent cannonballs, it was not a good position to observe what was happening at Ugamo to the French left, which is beyond the Lion's Mound monument. It appears that Napoleon would also have had a good view of Marshal Ney's cavalry charges later in the day. Napoleon would only leave this position one time during the battle. Around 6.30 p.m., he would lead the middle guard forward in his final bid to break the Allies and win the battle. 
he marched with them about as far as the farmhouse at Le Hay Sant. After the defeat of the Imperial Guard, Napoleon would retreat down the road to Chalois, passing both Rassam and Lacayo. Chapter 5 